This is problem number five on the sample test problems for test number two. Consider the sinusoidal function f of t equals three cosine of pi over four times t plus one minus one. Answer the following questions without using a calculator. A, find the amplitude, midline, and period of f. So here we just need to know where the pieces are. So the amplitude is a thing we've been calling A, and it is the number sitting in front of the trig function. So that's three. <clears throat> uh, just to highlight, uh, even if uh, this up here had been negative three, the amplitude would still be three. Amplitude is always a positive number. Okay, next part we want is the midline. So the midline is the thing that we have been calling K and it is the thing sitting on the outside. That's the minus one in this case. It's okay for midlines to be negative. Uh, and that makes sense because cosine normally is, um, you know, centered, uh, so to speak, on the x-axis. And that minus one on the outside shifts the whole graph down one. So it shifts the middle of the cosine down one as well. And then finally the period. We've got a little formula for the period. And the formula for the period is 2 pi divided by b. Uh, and uh, b is the number that's sitting in front of the t. Whether you distribute or not doesn't matter. It's the number that's in front of the t. So 2 pi divided by pi over 4. So let's clean this up a little bit. That's really 2 pi times 4 over pi. Remember. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. The pi's cancel and we get the period is just eight. In part B, we're supposed to sketch the graph of F and to note the scale on the axes. So let's give this a shot. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is draw in my midline. So the midline here is at negative one. So I will draw a dotted line at negative one. Um, and I'm quite content to just call each of these boxes here on the vertical uh, to give them a scale of one unit. So that's my midline, is at y is negative one. And then um, we know the amplitude is three, which means uh, we go up and down three from the midline. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw some more lines, um, you know, up three and down three. So up three from this one lands me at two. So let's see, maybe I wanna, Let's stretch this a little bit just so that it takes a, a little bit more space in the picture. So um, no, we'll keep it, we'll just keep it at one. So if we go up three from, uh, from negative one, we land on two. So that right there is gonna be the top of my graph. And if we go down three from negative one, uh, one, two, three, then we land at negative four. and that's gonna be the bottom of the graph. So it's fairly straightforward to be able to trap the graph between the high and the low, and the entire graph is gonna live between the top and bottom bands in this picture. Now we gotta figure out what's going on with the X's, the horizontal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this period and we're gonna chop it into four equal pieces because when you graph sine or cosine, it's real easy to graph if you plot the four pieces, the four quadrants separately. So the period in this case is eight, cut it into four equal pieces and we get two, which means that every one of my uh, quadrants basically happens in, uh, in a space of two horizontal units on my graph. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and the last thing I need to know is where the cosine starts. Now we say the word starts, but it's kind of in quotation marks because cosine goes forever left and right. But uh, normally I would think of uh, my cosine graph starting on the, on the y-axis. So do we have any horizontal shift in this problem? We do. This plus one right here is a horizontal shift and it moves the whole graph left one unit. So instead of thinking of starting on the y-axis, I'm gonna think of starting left one unit. So left one unit is this number right here. So negative one is where I'm gonna quote, start my cosine graph. And if a quarter of a period, I just calculated this here, a quarter of a period is two, it means that every uh, important point for me is gonna be two units away from previous important point. So we're just gonna kind of label some of these important points 
and then we'll finally be able to start plotting. So two units away is positive one, and then positive three, and then positive five. And uh, one more to get out to positive seven. And I think we'll have a complete period in there. Uh, if you notice, start to finish, uh, it's a total distance of eight. So that's one period cut into four pieces, one, two, three, and four. Um, and uh, let's see if we can squeeze in another period to the left. So let's see. Uh, next one here is at negative three, and then negative five, negative seven, and then negative nine. So I think we can graph two periods on this graph. And then we're just about done. Uh, I think all we need to do is now plot the points carefully. I would not go straight to just drawing the graph. I think drawing the graph is really difficult without plotting some points to connect. So cosine normally starts up at the top and it's on its way down. Okay, so let's see if we can start at the top. So the top of this case is, uh, let's see, we'll draw in purple. So the top point happens above negative one and it happens at the very top of my band here. And that corresponds to this first point right here. And then the next important point is normally on the x-axis, but more generally, it's just in the middle. So the next point is on the midline and it happens at the next red number. And so the next red number was one. And so if I just plot a point that's on the midline and right below or above one, then that's my next point. Next one is the point at the bottom. And so that's gonna happen at three. We're supposed to be at the bottom. Next one is out here. Again, it's at the middle. And so at five, we're supposed to be at the middle. Don't draw it at five. That x-axis is no longer the middle. So the middle is right there. And then finally, the last point is back at the top. And so at seven, we're back at the top. And so that's one complete period. And if we play the same game going to the left, then uh, I think we'll have two periods. So we're in the middle at the bottom, back in the middle, and then at the top. And then finally, just want to connect these things with a smooth curve. And uh, I think that sketch is good. Now, if um, you wanted to check your answer, of course, we're not supposed to use the calculator on this, but we can use it to check. So uh, what we need to do first is type in the function, which is way up there. So let's type in that function. So we're doing three cosine of pi over four, parentheses, t plus one. I don't know why I'm typing it out here. Let's go in here. Three cosine of pi over four, parentheses, uh, t plus one, so that's really x plus one for us. Uh, close the parentheses again, and then subtract one. And we want to make sure we're in the right mode. In this case, we want to be in radians because of the pies, so we're in radian. And then the window. Well, let's go ahead and pick a window that matches the, the graph that we drew. So the far left of my, um, the leftmost point that I drew here was at negative nine and the rightmost point was at seven, so let's pick those for the x min and x max. So we're gonna go negative nine to seven. And going by ones is fine, and then the y min, the bottom of my band here was at negative four, and the top was at two. And we're gonna go by ones again. And so if we'd done this correctly, we should get exactly the graph that we see here, two complete periods, uh, starting at the top and ending at the top. And that looks good to me. First complete period is, oops, first complete period goes to there. And then the second period goes to there. At the top left, we started and we ended at the top right. If you really want to be fancy, you can also graph the midline, which we said was at negative one. And uh, we should see that this negative one cuts the, cuts the graph right down the middle.